Topers. This is the second video for our big series about research and test the influence of inclusions in faceted gemstones. with this little experiment here and if you're not already subscribed to my channel please subscribe welcome to German gem color this week's video is about topaz this is the second video for our big series about research and test the influence of inclusions in faceted gemstones what you see here is a clear topaz already tumbled we have a shiny surface not a super high glossy piece, but good enough to take a closer look inside this wonderful and interesting gemstone. Let's turn the lights on so we get a little bit better view inside it. You often see these orange, yellowish, reddish inclusions in topaz. And very often they are in a cleavage plane. That's the reason why I'm not sure if we become a finished gemstone. I found a lot of topazes with these type of inclusions here. I think it is biotite. I'm not really sure. If you know what it is, please let us know in the comments. What is the plan with this piece? We also start with a very simple design. Easy to cut, just to check. What is the influence of these, uh, yeah, let's call it orange inclusion in the finished faceted gemstone. I will also use the smaller hex retro design by Robert Long because first result was very very good, was easy to cut. The original design is made for co-ops, the P1 facets are on 47 degrees and the first zone I set them to 42 degrees and it works fantastic. Later I see the note from Robert on the faceting diagram that angles between 41 and 43 are also okay for this design and the first result showed it is a cool design for topaz and here you see the effect I want to use look here in this transmitted light you can see what my plan is if it works we can use it to create wonderful colored topazes natural topazes so let's test it this uh, orange inclusion is like a layer in the stone. I will cut a flat surface here, so we are parallel to the inclusion layer, which means here is the pavilion and here is the crown. Now I will show you the faceting diagram. After that you will see the time lapse of the preforming, time lapse of the dopping and time lapse of the cutting. I think we take a closer look at the stone when I finished polishing the pavilion. After that we're going on with the crown and check the final result. Now enjoy the time lapse.
I finished polishing the pavilion and the gather line and here is the orange yellowish inclusion. It is possible to set an inclusion like this in your pavilion in Topaz. If you want to use an inclusion like this also, don't use coarse grids. Start on 600 or finer because uh, I'm still thinking that the area here is not 100% stable. The part underneath this inclusion, which means here the culet looks a little bit like we have glued them on the stone. It is uh, the inclusion is like a complete layer here and that's a little bit like a cleavage plane but uh, it was stable enough to cut and polish the stone. I'm sure if you use coarse grits then 600 will be very problematic. Yeah. We have to transfer the stone now on the cone dub. I will use a little bit more modeling clay, put it in the cone just to avoid that the culet breaks off after we finish the stone and get them off the dobs. Yeah, we have to test if it works. After that, I will show you some scenes how I cut the crown. I will cut the same way like the pavilion, which means start on the 600 grit, go up to the 3K, pre-polish with 8K diamond on a bed lab for the fun of polishing. I also use the 60K diamond on a bed lab. Okay, now enjoy time lapse and after that you will see the final result. Here it is, the final result with the big yellow inclusion. We have a nearly complete yellow gemstone due to these big inclusion in the pavilion. If you see the first video of this series, you know uh, that's a very sparkly and bright design. The inclusion is too opaque in this case. Yeah, but uh, we have a nice gemstone and we see an inclusion can change the color of a finished gemstone. Let me show you the stone from the side. Here you can see the position of the inclusion. 
it is down in the pavilion. Take a look from the pavilion. You see here in the back, very bright and sparkly. For the test, I'm happy with this result because we see an inclusion can change the color of the gemstone, but uh, we have to test a little bit more. It's a very interesting result. I'm really sure it is not for everybody, but uh, yeah, cool stone. Some nice effects. Thank you very much for watching my video. I hope you had fun gem cutting with me together, especially here in testing and some experiments. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Please turn on notifications if you don't want to miss a video. I had a lot of content planned for you. Also a very interesting cross-channel collaboration project. A lot more episodes of the influence of inclusions in gemstones. Please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you like this video. I really hope we see us in the next video or in the new episode of the influence of inclusions. Now enjoy a little slideshow where you can explore the stone and this inclusion a little bit better. Have a nice week. Bye bye.